What's up beautiful people, today we're going to be checking out Did the church forget its best answer to LGBTQ issues? Let's get to it. It seems the rainbow wave of unity plus activism has been faster, stronger, and more successful than Christians imagined. What advice would you give local churches seeking a strategy for addressing this culture shift? Mm. So, the rainbow wave, the vast cultural influx of LGBTQ plus influence, um, that has been a shock. It has been something that many Christians are still grasping for some kind of, uh, so, some resolution, some solution to the problem. And one of the risks that we run is looking for a quick fix. Historically, solutions from the church for large scale social problems are hardly ever a quick fix. Usually they're all long term, uh, deeply rooted foundation building type of things. So I think this may sound counterintuitive, but one of the first bits of advice I would give to a church that's looking for some sort of strategy in addressing um, the rainbow wave is focus on the family. <laughs> um, mm. I'm sure I'm probably promoting a, a well-known ministry there, but if we can do healthy traditional family right, we have the potential to short circuit, cut off, hotwire a lot of the alternatives that people are appealing to because their family was, was broken or their family was hurt or their family mm. was such a bad experience. Um, our focus on traditional marriage, traditional gender, uh, traditional rearing of children is invaluable. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of the church across its history has treated these as secondary in terms of the intellectual importance. What can we do to sort of fortify Christianity for future generations? Yes, we need to win the university. Yes, we need to, to be a profound influence in the great conversations that are shaping society. But we also need to do family right. And I'm not talking about family as a combative type of thing or, or the apologetics uh, uh, against uh, gay marriage or anything like that. I'm talking about helping men to know what man means, helping women know what woman means, helping married couples know what marriage means from a biblical standpoint. You might say this is sort of a pre-apologetics role that I think the church can be really good at. And without it, we struggle at the more traditional apologetics in addressing uh, gay marriage, in addressing uh, binary gender, in addressing biblical sexuality, biblical gender. We struggle with those if we don't have enough good reference points to turn to saying, here's what traditional marriage looks like. Here's what healthy gender looks like. So I would say first and foremost, whatever your strategy is that you're looking for, for your church, start with taking family, traditional family seriously, seriously and dig down deep into the fortifications for that. Don't relegate that to just some practical church ministry. Understand the theology behind it and communicate that and how civilization grows out of that garden. Hmm. That was a very good response. I didn't see him coming from the direction. I thought it was going to be like a, like an attack on the LGBTQ and how to fight back, but he used a very interesting direction. And I don't, I don't really disagree. I think if the values are promoted, a lot of these excesses can be, you know, you can trim some of the fat. But well, let me know your thoughts on that video. I'm just, I've just shared mine with you. So feel free to share yours. If you want to correct mine, you know, you can do so too. But it's the end of this one. Um, very good response. If you're in the church and you had, you need a response to a question like this. Well, there you have it. He's very smart. This video, I'll put the link to the channel in the description in case you want to go follow them or you want to go check them out. So feel free to do so as well. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.